the phone call that shattered my perception of my husband came on an ordinary Tuesday evening. I was in the kitchen putting the final touches on Elise's seventh birthday cake when I heard Declan's raised voice seeping through the crack in his study door. I don't care what it takes, Davis. Just make sure those documents disappear before the feds get a hold of them, he growled in a tone I didn't recognize. We're talking millions on the line here. Do whatever you have to. My heart pounded as I strained to make out the muffled response on the other end of the line. When had my loving husband turned so menacing? Frozen in place, my hands still gripping the piping bag, I tried to rationalize the outburst as stress from work. But that explanation rang hollow as his words were played in my mind, threats and sums of money so large I couldn't conceptualize them. Just then, Elise bounded into the kitchen in her pajamas, oblivious to the storm brewing down the hall. "'Mommy, is the cake ready yet?' she asked, craning her neck up towards the treat on the counter. I forced a smile, not wanting to frighten her. "'Almost, baby. Why don't you go pick out a movie for us to watch together?' Squealing with delight, she scurried off to the living room, while I stood paralyzed, my gut twisting with dread. "'Who was this volatile man I thought I knew so well?' the same person I'd built a life with over the last decade. Moments later, Declan sauntered into the kitchen, smoothing his tousled hair back into place as he approached. Before I could confront him about the call, he pulled me into an embrace, planting a kiss on my forehead. "'Smells delicious, babe,' he said, eyeing the sugary concoction. "'Can't wait to see the look on Ellie's face tomorrow.' I clung to him desperately, searching his warm brown eyes for any flicker of the rage I'd heard moments ago. But his expression remained tender and serene as ever, as if that disturbing call had been merely a terrible dream. My instincts warned me something was askew, but I questioned myself. Could I completely upend our family on a few overheard fragments, no matter how alarming? Pushing the nagging doubts aside for the moment, I smiled up at him. She's going to be so thrilled. Maybe we could kick off her big day with a horseback riding lesson like she's been asking. Declan chuckled, smoothing my hair from my face. Anything for my two favorite girls. That night, as I gazed at him snoring peacefully beside me, I knew our cozy world was on the precipice of crumbling. My husband, my rock, my partner of ten years, had a sinister secret. And I realized with gut-wrenching certainty that unraveling it would be the only way to truly know the man I'd once trusted with every fiber of my being. Over the next few weeks, Declan's behavior only grew more erratic and disturbing. Simple things, like his work stories not adding up or a detached demeanor when playing with Elise, raised red flags I could no longer ignore. One night after tucking Elise in, I decided to finally confront him about the suspicious call. Honey, can we talk? He looked up from his laptop, brow furrowed. What's up? Taking a deep breath, I recounted what I'd overheard that fateful evening, the hushed threats, the mention of incriminating documents. By the time I finished, his face had drained of color. You were eavesdropping on my private conversations? He snapped, slamming the laptop shut. I recoiled at the venom in his tone. I didn't mean to, I just... Just what? Thought you'd play private investigator on your own husband? He rose from his chair, towering over me. Those calls were confidential business matters not some tawdry affair for you to stick your nose in. Indignation flared within me. Declan, you were talking about hiding evidence and paying people off. What am I supposed to think? His jaw tightened. You're supposed to trust that I'd never do anything to jeopardize this family. But I see now that was a mistake. With that, he brushed past me and stormed out of the room, leaving me shaken and utterly adrift. Was the man I loved truly capable of such sinister deeds? The next day, the local news provided a chilling answer. Declan's employer, an investment firm downtown, was under federal investigation for fraud and embezzlement. Reeling from the revelation, I scrolled through the damning coverage, each breathless report more lurid than the last. That's when Elise wandered into the room, amber eyes wide. Mommy, why are they saying such mean things about Daddy's work on TV? I scrambled to find reassuring words, but she seemed to read the worry etched on my face. Don't worry, she said, lowering her voice to a whisper. Daddy told me not to talk about his secret meetings at home or he'll get really mad. But I won't say anything, I promise. 
my blood turned to ice in my veins as her innocent words detonated the final shred of doubt. My husband, my daughter's hero, was not only mixed up in illicit corporate schemes, but forcing a seven-year-old to cover up for his misdeeds. Rage engulfed me, burning hotter with every ragged breath until I could scarcely see straight. That evening, while Declan sat fuming in the den, I scoured his study for any trace of evidence to confirm my darkest suspicions. In his desk drawer, buried beneath reams of financial reports, I found a disposable prepaid phone, likely the device he'd used to make those cryptic calls. But it was the sheaf of documents underneath that made my heart plummet into my gut. Emails, incriminating spreadsheets, offshore bank statements, all leading an unmistakable trail back to Declan's role in pillaging funds and defrauding clients. The confidential business matters he'd raged about were nothing more than a litany of high-stakes crimes designed to bankroll our luxurious lifestyle. My hands trembled as I clutched the documents, the realm of plausible deniability evaporating like a noxious gas. The man I'd loved, the father of my child, was a con man teetering on the edge of sheer criminality, and he'd willingly entangled our entire family in his web of deceit. With the damning evidence clutched in my hands, I knew I had to confront Declan again, no matter how explosive the fallout. As I marched into the den, resolution steeled my nerves against the fear bubbling in my gut. We need to talk. Now. I slapped the incriminating papers onto his desk, scattering them across the polished mahogany surface. His head whipped up, eyes widening as he registered the disclosed secrets. Where did you get those? He growled, shoving his chair back with a harsh screech. From your locked desk drawer the one with all your little secrets tucked away. I crossed my arms, holding his seething gaze. I knew those calls were more than just confidential business, but this— God, Declan, how could you get mixed up in something so blatantly illegal? In a blur of motion, he shot to his feet and closed the distance between us, fists clenched. You had no right going through my private things, he roared, spittle flying as his face flushed crimson. Those documents are part of an active federal case. You stupid woman. Do you have any idea what kind of trouble you could bring down on this family? I stood my ground, crushing down the urge to flinch. The only one bringing trouble is you and your shady Wall Street dealings. What about our daughter, huh? How does getting her trapped in your sordid web of fraud not eating you up inside? Declan's hardened expression faltered, the slightest crack forming in his rage mask. Elise? He sank back onto the couch, dragging a hand down his face. You think I don't agonize over putting you both at risk? Those spreadsheets, those accounts? That was all to secure a future for our family, babe. A future better than anything my old man could scrape together with his deadbeat salary. I scoffed bitterly at his attempts to rationalize the unforgivable. And having your little girl lie for you, keep your criminal secrets, how does that noble motive fit into your twisted plans? A muscle ticked in his jaw as we faced off in tense silence, the weight of his innumerable transgressions pressing down like a shroud. Just as I opened my mouth to unleash another fusillade, a tiny voice piped up from the doorway. Mommy? Daddy? Elise lingered on the threshold in her flannel nightgown, eyes swollen from crying. I had another bad dream about the monsters. My heart shattered into pieces as realization washed over me with brutal clarity. In her childlike innocence, she'd unconsciously represented the darkness pervading her own home. The true monsters weren't a fantasy, but the very man tasked with protecting her. Declan softened for a fleeting moment, lifting his arms as if to embrace our daughter. But as soon as Elise shrank back, that tender facade crumpled, his face contorting in a foul leer. Get out, Elise, he spat with repulsive venom. This is grown-up talk and you've stuck your nose where it doesn't belong for far too long already. Before I could react, he snatched a paperweight from the desk and hurled it at the terrified girl. It struck the doorframe mere inches from her head, shards of glass detonating in all directions as she released a blood-curdling wail. Declan, you psychopath! I screeched, shoving him back as he advanced on the sobbing child. Get away from her! Gathering Elise into my arms, I fled the den in blind panic my little girl's desperate cries echoing through the cavernous home that had once shielded us so lovingly. Behind the mahogany doors, Declan's own monstrous roars reverberated like some demonic force unleashed. 
as I clutched my baby to my chest, her warmth the only solace from the horror. One certainty crystallized amid the chaos. Whatever the cost, I had to extract us from this nightmare, before his swirling malevolence consumed us both. The morning after Declan's violent outburst, a heavy pall hung over our once idyllic home. Elise clung to me like a second skin, whimpering at the slightest creak or groan of the old house. My own heart raced with each unexplained thump, half expecting my unhinged husband to come raging through the door at any moment. By the time the pale winter light seeped through the curtains, I could no longer abide the sickening tension. I had to regain some semblance of control over this rapidly fracturing situation. Stealing my nerves, I tucked Elise into the living room with her favorite movies before creeping down the hall toward Declan's study. The door was ajar, the room beyond disheveled from our cataclysmic fight the previous evening. Books and papers were strewn about, the heavy crystal paperweight lying in a shower of glittering shards, a silent herald of the violence that had shattered our domestic peace. Bracing myself, I nudged the door open farther and stepped inside. Declan sat hunched behind the desk, nursing a crystal tumbler of amber liquid. His shirt hung untucked, his normally immaculate hair disheveled. At the sound of my footsteps, his bloodshot eyes flicked up with a chilling cynicism. So, he began, vowels thick and slurred, the self-righteous princess has emerged to cast judgment on her monstrous husband. I battled to keep my voice from wavering. Declan, we need to talk about last night. About your treacherous snooping? He snarled, slamming his palm on the desk and making me flinch. About throwing away everything we've built with your childish tantrums? My mouth set in a grim line as I fought the urge to recoil from his acidic vitriol. This poisonous version of the man I married couldn't be reasoned with, not until I exposed the root of his malice. If you think protecting our family means terrorizing our daughter, then yes, we have a serious problem, I shot back unflinching. Those business dealings you claim were a means to an end? Those were criminal acts, Declan. Fraud, embezzlement, money laundering. And you forced Elise to cover for your shady tracks. To my shock, a cruel chuckle rumbled from his throat as he knocked back another swig of his drink. You want to talk crimes, princess? Let's start with your flagrant violation of attorney-client privilege when you rifled through those documents. That's what? Three years in the slammer right there? As the words slithered from his mouth, a glacial chill gripped me. In his twisted reality, I was the criminal for uncovering his misdeeds. Not to mention my future earning potential you've utterly decimated with your self-righteous crusade, he continued with a disturbing calm, rising from his chair to stalk closer. You think your paltry pay uploading stock photos even qualifies as providing for this family? Without my income stream, we're left with what? That fleabag cottage your deadbeat dad left you in his estate? My insides reeled from the verbal onslaught as he towered over me the scent of whiskey and stale cologne invading my senses. Though I longed to flee from the unstable fire raging in his eyes, something stronger took root, a primal instinct to protect my child from this inexplicable darkness. You're delusional, Declan, I managed through gritted teeth, willing my hands to remain steady. After everything you've done, jeopardizing Elise's well-being, you think you have any claim over providing for us? You're going to jail, you sick bastard, even if I have to make sure of it myself. At those words, any vestiges of the man I'd once loved contorted into a vicious snarl of hatred. His fingers coiled around my throat with preternatural strength as he slammed me against the desk, upending papers and trinkets in a deafening clatter. You sanctimonious bitch, he bellowed in my face, spittle flying as his forearm crushed my windpipe. I'll show you delusional. As Declan's snarling face hovered above me, all reason and humanity extinguished behind his crazed eyes, I felt a cold certainty. This man intended to kill me. I clawed desperately at his vice-like grip, but his forearm remained an inflexible bar across my windpipe. Black spots erupted in my vision as I choked on the scant airflow. In a final burst of adrenaline, I slammed my knee upwards, making sickening contact. Declan recoiled with a guttural groan, his hands flying to his groin as I crumpled to the floor, wheezing in ragged gulps of precious oxygen. "'You crazy bitch!' he growled through clenched teeth. "'I'll make you regret that.' Sensing his fury reigniting, I scrabbled backwards towards the door on all fours. 
desperate to put distance between us. Just as his hulking form advanced again, little feet pounded up the hallway. Mommy? Elise appeared in the doorway, her tiny voice cutting through the chaos. Declan froze, seemingly snapping out of his psychotic trance for a fleeting moment as his gaze fell upon our cowering daughter. She clutched her tattered stuffed bunny to her chest, those soulful amber eyes now marred with terror. In that suspended breath, a profound shift overcame my husband's face. Not one of remorse, but eerie calculation as he processed the situation. When he finally spoke, the malice had receded, replaced by a sickening false calm. It's okay, princess. Mommy and I were just having a grown-up disagreement. He straightened his rumpled shirt, smoothing back his disheveled hair in a perverse mimicry of composure. Why don't you go pick out a puzzle for us to do together? Make it a hard one. Elise shrank back uncertainly, her small frame trembling as her gaze flickered between the two of us. But I heard yelling. Don't question me, Elise, Declan erupted, his failed mask of tranquility shattering like a ceramic vase. Just do as you're told for once. With a terrified squeak, she scurried away down the hall, no doubt scurrying to the safety of her bedroom to escape his towering presence. Tears burned in my eyes as his cruelty lanced my heart. Once the echo of her footsteps faded, my husband turned his smoldering glare back towards me, his expression morphing into one of chilling resolution. I don't know what insane game you think you're playing at, Cora. He began in a measured tone that felt more unsettling than his previous rage. But I'll be damned if I let you take my family away from me, the life I've bled and sacrificed for. He stalked towards his disheveled desk and snatched up his cell phone, thumbs flying over the screen. What are you doing? I croaked out, dreading his response. Calling my lawyers, he replied coldly. Getting ahead of the shitstorm you've unleashed before, you can go broadcasting any more of those corporate secrets you stole. Those documents prove you're a criminal, I spat fury reigniting within my battered body. Those documents, he countered with a cruel smile, are inadmissible evidence that I have a right to protect through attorney-client privilege. You violated that sacred trust when you stole them, which my legal team will make sure the courts recognize as a felony. Dread coiled in my stomach as his twisted logic rang terrifyingly true. In my desperation to expose his depravity, had I inadvertently handed him the bullet for my own demise? So you can either come clean with me, cooperate to fix this damn mess quietly, Declan continued, that reptilian smile never faltering, or you can take your chances as an accomplice obstructing a federal investigation. Up to you, babe. In that moment, his cellular chirped to life as our bank's number flashed across the screen. With a sardonic wink, my husband raised the device to his ear. Looks like we need to have a talk about our finances, too. Over the next several days, Declan's callous dominance only tightened its oppressive grip over our household. Once my initial banking passwords were breached, he systematically drained my personal accounts, leaving me financially marooned. Can't have you siphoning off money for some harebrained escape plot, now can we? He taunted with a cruel smile, slapping the latest zero balance statements onto the kitchen counter in front of me. I clenched my fists, rage and hopelessness warring within me like combatants in the Colosseum. Forced into destitution by the very man I'd vowed to love and honor, I had nowhere to turn, no funds to subsidize an escape for Elise and myself. It wasn't long before Declan's smothering control extended far beyond simple finance. His hired legal muscle churned out restraining dictates by the hour. I was prohibited from contacting law enforcement or advocacy services, removing a lease from the premises, even making unauthorized use of the home's amenities. Like a gazelle ensnared in the python's voracious coils, I found every desperate bid for freedom, only entrenching me deeper in Declan's meticulously constructed trap. Whenever I tried to slip away for even a private phone call, his hired goons would materialize from the shadows, eyes concealed behind mirrored shades as they blocked my path with crossed arms. All the while, Declan would smirk in the background, secure in the knowledge that I was neutered, utterly impotent. And always lurking at the fringes of this waking nightmare was my innocent little girl, wounded eyes silently pleading for circumstances she couldn't comprehend. My heart shattered every time Elise instinctively shrank from her father's presence, 
the emotional scars of his violent outbursts now seared into her psyche. At night, I lay awake plotting any conceivable path out of this fresh hell, contacting family, taking out loans, scraping together whatever meager funds I could to finance a clean evaporative exit. But Declan had foreseen every eventuality, leaving me more cornered than a sewer rat in a flaming baited trap. On the seventh interminable day of this perverted house arrest, I finally accepted the only glimmer of hope was to outmaneuver Declan through guile. As I pretended to drift into yet another fitful rest that evening, I clutched the disposable phone I'd covertly procured like a lifeline. Painstakingly, I tapped out a coded message to the only friend I could still trust, praying she would understand the layered urgency of my desperate plea. If anyone could bail me out of this steadily calcifying prison, it would be Gwen. My thumb hovered over the send button, both elation and trepidation gripping me. One errant movement, one infinitesimal slip-up, and Declan would sniff out my gambit before I could so much as blink. I had one tenuous shot to light the fuse for our potential salvation. No more delaying the inevitable. I punched send, sealing my family's fate. Either freedom beckoned over the horizon, or the merciless anvil would clamp down with finality. For the next twelve hours, I sat vigil in excruciating silence, willing my expression into one of serene obliviousness whenever the pretense of breakfast or Declan's leering presence demanded it. My gut roiled with every unaccounted-for creak, bracing for the inevitable confrontation over my badly concealed transgressions. Just after noon chimed, the Winchester doorbell resounded through the foyer, nearly causing my heart to detonate from my chest cavity. I froze, ears straining, as thudding footsteps and muted voices preceded the study door banging open. What is the meaning of this? Declan roared as three grim-faced federal agents swarmed into the living area, badges displayed. I scrambled to my feet, hands shaking with a dizzying cocktail of relief and mortal terror. One semi-automatic sidearm swung in my direction before steadying inches from my face. Cora Manchester, the lead agent barked, we have an authorized warrant for your protective custody. As his compatriots slapped tactical cuffs on my bewildered husband, Declan wheeled on me with feral hatred contorting his features. You lying, traitorous wench, he bellowed, spittle flying as the agents wrenched his arms behind his back. After everything I've done for this family, this is how you repay me? The rage and humiliation radiating from him in scathing waves should have paralyzed me. But as my gaze met Elise's terrified one peering from around the staircase corner, only one Schlina overwhelmed every primal instinct, protection. I had to see this through for her sake. Drawing a fortifying breath, I steadied my nerves under Declan's smoldering glare. What you've done for us? Your fraud and criminality cost us any ounce of a real family. You deluded animal. Just be grateful I've only seen that you face justice and not a bullet. With that, I lifted my manacled wrists and allowed the agents to lead me towards the phalanx of federal SUVs idling outside, retribution's resounding thunder finally exercising the tyranny festering under my own roof. As the FBI convoy roared away from the curb, sirens wailing, I clutched Elise's trembling form against me in the back of the armored SUV. My little girl's cheeks glistened with terrified tears, her tiny hands fisting my sweater like a lifeline. "'It's okay, baby,' I murmured into her soft auburn hair, struggling to modulate my own ragged breaths. Daddy can't hurt us anymore. The words felt bizarrely hollow, despite the iron truth of the sentiment. After so many weeks languishing under Declan's escalating reign of terror, the very notion of freedom seemed utterly paradoxical. No sooner had the thought materialized than a cacophonous explosion detonated a few blocks away, the shockwave rocking our vehicle like a skipping stone. I instinctively smothered Elise's tiny frame against me as smoke and debris billowed into view through the SUV's tinted windows. All units be advised, we have shots fired! One of the agents barked into his radio, his jaw clenching. The target's residence has been hit with an incendiary device. My heart plummeted in concert with the acrid smoke billowing from the fresh scene of devastation. The house. Our home. Declan. Before I could voice the kaleidoscope of questions rocketing through my psyche, the agent's radio squawked again with a strained voice. This is Stryker Unit, requesting immediate backup. 
We are taking sustained automatic fire from unknown shooters inside the house. The bomb squad and HRT need to roll out immediately. Elise's piercing wail cut through the tactical chatter as more thunderous detonations shook our vehicle like a rag doll amid the maelstrom. Though every parental instinct demanded I provide soothing affirmations, I could only gaze on in numb shock at the surreal tableau of fire and violence erupting around us. Declan's true depravity knew no bounds. Rather than face the consequences of his actions, he would indiscriminately slaughter anyone and anything in his path. Before my scattered thoughts could fully coalesce, a hissed order crackled over the radio for our transport team to peel away from the burgeoning war zone. The engine roared back to life as the SUV executed an armored reversal and peeled away at breakneck speed with an earth-shuddering squeal of reinforced tires. Metal barricades and concrete jersey walls whipped past the windows in a sickening blur as we careened away from the deafening violence. Still, I could not tear my eyes from the carnage painting itself across the horizon in shades of fire and smoke, all born from the choices of a single monstrous man. A husband and father who so blithely incinerated the laws of man and God to assuage his own hubris. When the tremors battering our vehicle finally subsided, one of the agents slumped back against the reinforced partition with a ragged sigh. Christ on a cracker! They weren't kidding that this guy was batshit crazy. He cast a sidelong look at Elise and me, bundled together on the bench seat. Sorry about that, kid. Your daddy clearly has some real problems keeping his business clean. Before I could unleash the torrent of outrage and venom simmering beneath my skin, Elise peered up at me with those saucer-wide amber eyes, seeming to plead through her torrent of tears. Throat aching, I forced down the growling invectives clamoring for release and simply pulled her trembling little body tighter against my own. The rest of the drive passed in a blur of shouted orders and screeching vehicular cavalcades, speeding in all directions. At some point, reinforced assault vehicles joined our armored caravan, heavily armed HRT officers clinging to the rumbling transports like grim-faced gargoyles. As our path curved towards the heart of an auxiliary command staging area, it became abundantly clear how catastrophic Declan's violent unraveling had become. Choppers swarmed overhead, hovering floodlights bleaching the ground in clinical white while robotic drones flickered through the air like mechanized insects. The SUV finally rolled to a shuddering stop as our doors were wrenched open from outside, figures clad in tactical gear efficiently ushering us into the subterranean refuge beneath the staging area. Weaving through prefab command modules and field terminals glowing with encrypted data, a towering silhouette from the bustle to greet our bedraggled party. Agent Vanover, the grizzled woman in a sharp rest suit intoned by way of greeting, those pale eyes boring into me with unsettling intensity. I see, Mr. Manchester's threats weren't just saber-rattling after all. Before I could respond, her gaze drifted down to take in Elise's hunched, quivering posture. My God, she breathed, something like genuine pity creasing her stern features. That poor child. It was a simple reaction. Yet those three syllables detonated the dam of pent-up emotion, trauma, and sheer, unadulterated relief within me in a torrent of throat-cleaving sobs. I'm not sure whether it was Elise's broken whimpers or my own gulping gasps for air that finally breached the berserker fog of terror and rage and shame clogging my mind. All I knew was that in that singular crystalline moment— Every last ounce of fear evaporated in the presence of human compassion and the promise of justice. Whatever blood toll awaited back at our former home, whatever unspeakable price the demons of Declan's reckoning would extract, we would survive this crucible. More importantly, my little girl was finally safe from her father's maniacal shadow once and for all. In the aftermath of Declan's explosive unraveling, our lives were upended in more ways than I could have envisioned. In addition to the charred husk of our former home, every asset my husband had illicitly amassed over his criminal career was seized. Offshore accounts drained, property deeds reclaimed, even the luxury SUV impounded as criminal evidence. Not that I mourned any of those ill-gotten trappings. If rebuilding from scratch was the penance for untangling myself from Declan's poisonous web, I would gladly pay it a million times over. What did gut me like a bayonet thrust was the collateral fallout for Elise. 
my sweet baby girl already bearing scars far too deep for her tender years, now had her innocence compounded by the trauma of witnessing such violence and depravity. Those first few nights alone together in the Spartan safe house, I would jolt awake in cold sweats to her muffled sobs from the adjoining room. Each time I would gather her up in my arms, rocking her gently as she unleashed the torrent of fear and bewilderment in rambling pleas to make the monsters go away. It shattered my heart into shards to see her so petrified, so unmoored from any sense of security I had failed so catastrophically to provide. All I could do was swathe her in my embrace and murmur soothing mantras about the darkness passing, about brighter days peeking over the horizon. In those first turbulent weeks I shunned all inquiries about media appearances or interviews regarding Declan's high-profile crimes. The DA could bloviate all she wanted at press conferences, decrying his unforgivable violations and staggering breach of public trust. In my book, the only part that mattered was that he was off the streets, remanded to federal custody to fester in his own savagery. What did consume my every waking moment was ensuring the return of any funds or assets he had covertly drained or transferred from my own accounts during our domestic hostage situation. Armed with the documentation of his malfeasance, it took numerous court dates, but eventually the money he had so maliciously stripped from me was returned in full. Not that I had any intention of replicating our formerly opulent lifestyle. The first call I made after replenishing my finances was to my older sister down in Richmond, asking if she could watch a lease for a few weeks while I took care of some personal affairs. When my rental car finally rolled up the gravel drive to our childhood home, the old cabin appeared just as ramshackle and weather-beaten as it had in my youth. Roof shingles askew, the wrapped porch slightly sagging in places. Yet the mere sight of those familiar angles untouched by Declan's darkness had hot tears misting my eyes. My father had been adamant about never selling this rustic mountain retreat, his personal Eden far from the trappings of the material world. Though only large enough for a simple two bedrooms, the property encompassed nearly a hundred wooded acres, plenty of open space for two lost souls in desperate need of healing and sanctuary. Over the following year, I channeled every ounce of personal revenue into restoring the ramshackle cabin and its surrounding land. It wasn't merely a renovation in the structural sense, but an active exorcism of the toxicity and despair that had threatened to subsume my very existence back in the city. With each newly installed window overlooking the gently rolling hills and sycamore groves, I could feel layers of psychic grime slowing away. Every fresh coat of sun-bleached paint helped cauterize the mental and emotional lacerations inflicted by my monstrous former partner's madness. And with each lilting brook babbling gently nearby, and every chorus of cicadas trilling beneath the star-speckled canopy at night, I could sense Elise's spirit regaining its resiliency in aching increments. Her initial night terrors gradually subsided replaced with restorative slumbers that left her bounding through wildflower fields each new morning with a renewed spark of innocent mirth. By the time the cabin and surrounding acreage had been fully rehabilitated, my own sense of shattered self finally began to knit itself back together as well. I was no longer the brittle, gasping shell of a woman torn asunder by deception and psychological warfare. Nor was I some blazoned victim raging incessantly for retribution— thirsting for Declan's eternal suffering. In a very real sense, I was reborn from the smoldering ashes of my former life. Tempered in the purifying fires of adversity, I had been forged into a resilient new alloy, a protective, nurturing force for the preservation of my family and our hard-won serenity. It took another six months before I was able to share my full story with victim advocacy groups and law enforcement associations aiming to pierce the pernicious silence surrounding financial abuse and coercive domestic partnerships. Where others still shrank from confronting these shadowed social cancers, Elise and I strode forward as beacons of survival and empowerment, living testaments to the regenerative capacity of the human spirit. While the generational trauma inflicted upon my little girl can never be fully expunged, I remain resolute that her path will remain unshackled by the oppressive chains of her father's monumental moral failures. 
where Declan committed his life to the pursuit of vapid corporeal riches, Elise will only know richness of character and resilience. And each time I gaze out over the dusky rolling hillsides from our little cabin's porch, breathing in the piney embrace of our hard-won freedom, I know we have both discovered the true treasures worth safeguarding, family, refuge, and the invincible fortitude to prevail over even the darkest, most insidious transgressions. <laughs>